Thank you for uh, joining another episode of uh, Direct Connect with Archer. Uh, I'm Mark Bromstead, Senior Vice President of Client Relationships here at Archer. Uh, here with uh, me today, we've got Jeff Johnson and Stacy Brussler of Archer. Stacy Brussler is one of the founder and managing partners here at Archer, and Jeff Johnson is one of our senior cybersecurity and NERC SIP compliance consultants. Hello, gentlemen. How are you today? Doing and, well. Uh, doing good for a Monday. That it is. So, <laughs> guess what? It's, yeah. You know... That, that whole term, Manic Monday, has really played out well for today. It does that once mm. in a while, especially uh, I, I found uh, as folks got out of the um, wrapping up of school and trying to get ahead of things before the holiday weekend hits, um, it's manic, uh, it's going to be manic all week, I think. Oh, absolutely. I think all of our clients are going, it's already 4th of July. Why do we have to work? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Let's just make the consultants do it all. There you go. And we gladly will, too. Um you know, one of the topics that we've been talking about for quite a while um, and have, has really uh, become elevated uh, more recently for, for a variety of reasons, I'm sure, is that of uh, continuous improvement. Um, now, I know you all have been part of organizations, large, small, um, worked with and for uh, organizations kind of covering uh, the gamut. Um, you know, I'd love to, when you guys think of continuous improvement in our world, um, what do you guys think of? Well, I'll kick it off. Uh, the first word that comes to mind is complacency. Um, and, and the reason I think that is is because it's so often in our world of regulation, what we're dealing with mostly is the NERC regulations, and we also have some TSA. But complacency is easy to start building itself into the organization after an audit. It's, it's this period of time between the last audit and the next audit that really gets uh, individuals in trouble. And that's why continuous improvement is certainly something that you have to focus on. And it takes a lot of drive. It's not easy to do. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Uh, I can speak from personal experience where I was born in this industry was at a generation facility. And one of the things that I tried to foster in, the, in terms of a culture of compliance was I saw that the NERC SIP regulation space was often considered something of an annoying distraction, right? And job number one is to make electrons move through the line, right? Keep your customer base happy. But I still had to figure out a way to make that culture of compliance and that continuous improvement something I could sell. So what I ended up trying to do was tie it to safety because one of the things that the people in our industry are exceptionally good at is safety, right? FR gear, everything else, working out in the field, working on lines, they take that extremely seriously and they're constantly improving that. So my idea was take SIP and make it part of safety or at least get that same mindset because you know, the physical and the cyber has the same effect as grabbing something and ripping down a line, right? Um, got a little bit of traction with that and I really think that that's something from our industry if we changed the mindset to, oh my gosh, I just have to do this patching crap because I have to, to I'm literally helping computers stay online so I can give power to my customers. That's a really it's good, a safety thing. It's a really good point, Jeff. Uh, you know, we've been talking about connecting with the safety programs for years. Um, it, it's that, um, that story that you just said that, you know, that selling component, instead of telling you're selling and selling people on the idea that you're, you're helping save the grid is a really important message because it really is. That's what we're doing. It's not as visible as ops, though. That's that. I think that's the biggest challenge on the SIP side. O&P, they definitely have some ties in there, although you hear the grumblings from engineers as well. Um, but that continuous improvement element to safety is something they talk about all the time. It's it's what can we do better? What can we do better? What can we do better? And we need to ask that same question of your of your regulatory obligations. What can we do better? Not, not, this is what I hear a lot, not how much less can we do to be compliant, not minimizing your obligations, but finding ways to make it easier to demonstrate compliance. I think that's the biggest one, to be honest with you guys, if I were to say anything. Being able to 
um, be better at your demonstrating performance evidence. That's something that almost everybody can work on. And I don't see anybody really paying a lot of attention to that. They get through their audit, like I said, and then, oh, big relief. We got a couple of mitigation plans maybe to do it. Let's move on. And then three years or six years go by and we're back at the same place. And it's amazing how fast three and six years can go by and how little can get done uh, following an audit. Uh, you know, I've definitely definitely seen those clients that have a true culture of a continuous improvement. Um, they're the ones who seemingly get a lot done in those three to six years between, uh, between audits. Uh, and for those that uh, don't have that culture ingrained in a process and procedure to execute upon, uh, they're the ones that seem to obviously struggle and move the needle forward in their overall maturity. This is a horrible say, thing to say from a consulting firm, but I sure wish we didn't have to exist. And, and, and honestly, I mean that because the only reason I'm in this business is because I enjoy helping people do the right thing. And if if we could get, well, maybe we'll, hopefully, well, I don't know how to say this the right way, <laughs> uh, but hopefully... Uh, people can take a lot from what we learn and get better, and we can continue with the next generation and help them continue that pro process. Yeah, Stacy, it's interesting. The uh, you know what I see more often than not is, are those companies that have leadership that is truly engaged in the overall solution, in the team. That engagement is what really, for me, when I see it, uh, is what drives the success. Uh, of, a, of an organization towards continuous improvement. And you mean, what do you mean by engaged, Mark? Because I see different levels of it. Just curious what you think. So, you know, for me, one of the things that I have seen organizations that are successful and are moving the needle uh, really are those organizations that have leadership involvement, leadership, uh, you know, whether they're the, the ones ha hands on you know, physically doing it or just from a leadership perspective, those that are engaged have organizations that will follow them, quite honestly. And I guess I'd ask you guys both, you know, kind of what, what do you think is engagement? Um, I've seen various levels of engagement from executives. Uh, sometimes it's just a, a report that they read or there's a committee where they get together. Um, I think that one of the missing elements of that is, is beyond just the meetings or just reading the reports, what else do they do? You know, Stacy, that's a, that's a really good question. For me, it's those leaders that are the ones that able, are able to remove the roadblocks uh, for the organization, as well as they're the ones who really champion the conversation of compliance within the organization at the senior leadership levels uh, and really at all management levels. Yeah, and I would, I would add from my days in the regulatory enforcement area that <clears throat> the places that we tended to see where things were falling down and falling down hard definitely had a lack of a management's finger on the pulse of the compliance program, right? Um, the flip side of that, some of the shining light of some of the utilities that I worked with, the management was involved at a layer that Sometimes you had to walk a fine line between them getting involved and, and getting too involved, right? And start com making things more complicated. But quite frankly, it was the ones that were engaged, asking questions, you know, dealing with the SMEs and dealing with the regulatory component on a face-to-face, hands-on basis, rather than just standing on top of an ivory tower and saying, well, you know, we messed up, let's just write a check and make it go away. So the shining ones were the ones where the leadership was like, yeah, okay, we made a mistake. Our people did something or, or our program fell down. Now let's work to resolve it, make sure it doesn't happen again. Oh, and are, I think that's key. Yeah, I think you're, you're right on. I think you keyed on a, a part of it that um, leadership needs to ask good questions, right? Um, and the questions they need to ask are, how can I help you? How can I help you along the way? And to Mark, your point, you know, getting rid of the hurdles, whatever barricades might exist toward, you know, assuring that you continue to be compliant, not just get to compliance. And I think those are really important things. That's a, sometimes a hard thing to, to do versus say, but, uh, um, you know, it, it's a necessary evil in order to assure that you're doing that stuff and give some authority to your compliance program uh, people. I, I see often that the compliance organization 
is is scared of their executives and they're really scared of their business areas and they're caught between two rocks and uh you know if leadership can enable them and in, in, in give them that uh, uh authority um i think things clear up a lot um another thing is uh you may you, it was really funny that you said that uh jeff is about uh um, getting too involved well that's that's definitely something that can happen um, when executives start diving into areas that they don't understand, um, sometimes they need to take a step back and just realize they don't understand. Um, because like SIP 5 can get really super complicated really fast. So you got to trust your SMEs sometimes. Um, but that, that's good leadership is to be able to listen and also smell how, I'll, I'll just finalize this part, smell out the bad stuff. Um, because there's going to be bad messages. You got to, you got to be able to have that skill to say, uh, I'm, I'm being sold something that's not real, I, I'm pretty sure. So, You know, we, were ta- we talked a little bit about leadership and, and their engagement and some of the things that we've seen, um, but how would you guys, how do organiza- organizations really foster an attitude of continuous uh, improvement in their, in their space? How, you answer that in any way that you want, maybe an example or, or otherwise, but how do you really see them fostering that attitude across the organization? Well, I've seen two very divergent approaches. I've seen the carrot and the stick. I've seen, you know, departments that are run on a kind of merit-based, bonus-based, incentive-based situations where, you know, in addition to the traditional, you know, we're all in this together to help protect the safety and reliability of the BEZ, you know, if you if you do that and you do it well, then you get a reward at the end and that incentivizes people to try not to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. Um, that works pretty well in a lot of cases. Um, not everybody's as passionate about SIP as, as we are um, because, you know, people sometimes they, they're told they're going to be involved in NERC SIP and they run completely opposite in direction. So <laughs> you have to contend with that. Um, but I've seen the stick approach too. And, you know, that's more of the especially when you experience utilities that are having programmatic failures where it's like one self-report after another again and again and again, the same mistakes are being made, the same systems are breaking down. Then you get the, you know, the management come down hard and, and really start to, to make people understand that, you know, their livelihoods, their jobs, their reputations are on the line along the line of the reputation and the safety of the company. Um, I've seen both results produce which one is the best? I tend to lean towards the carrot, but you know that's why the entire regulatory enforcement process exists, right? At that grander level, you reward the companies that are doing well with you know, mild FFTs or some cl- compliance acceptance, but the stick comes into play, and unfortunately, it starts at the top and trickles its way down. So, you know, pick your own adventure type of thing, but I think either way, it forces the people that are in the field and in the trenches to do a better job. And depending on what their motivation ends up being is hopefully how successful they'll be. Absolutely. I think you're spot on there. This kind of plays into a uh, on target that I just did recently um, where, you know, I'm selling and talking about the, you know, selling versus telling and that big stick that you had, you, you talk about. Um, it can produce those results, but it's probably not long term. Um, and, and on the flip side, if you're rewarding everybody for a bunch of stuff, and that's a lot of, you know, the carrot kind of thing, it, 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 it lasts for a while. But not everybody's incentivized by, you know, bonuses and money. Uh, they want to know that they're making a difference. And so there's, there's a lot of ways to, you know, um, catch more flies with honey. And, uh, you know, don't think that carrots have to just be you know, a bonus at the end of the day. It could be just, hey, guys, that was fantastic work you did. Why don't you go out to dinner, you small group of three or four, on me kind of thing. Simple little things that could really help, you know, drive this this team approach to solutioning. And uh, I think that's always the better, the better process. But um, in the background, it, you want to sell versus tell. You want to educate versus train um, and spend that time with the people that have to do this and have to do it right for the entire organization to be compliant. 
spend time with them. Don't just think they're going to read a procedure or a process and be successful. You know, those are really good points. And it really just is then incumbent on the leaders to know their people. When we get in the conversation of continuous improvement, uh, it very quickly goes to leadership effectiveness quite often. So um, they have to know their teams, carrot stick, what works, a blend, what types of carrots. Um, so that's uh, that's a great point. So thank you both. Um, mm -hmm. And on that note, I think a great place to maybe wrap up this conversation. Jeff and Stacy, thank you for uh, your involvement in uh, another wonderful Direct Connect with Archer. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Bye. Stay up to date on all the videos we release here at Archer by clicking on the subscribe button. Click on the bell to be notified right away when we release new videos. If you know of a topic or someone you think we should talk to on Direct Connect, please let us know in the comments below.